Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. How to get over all those insecurities we talked about. How to get past the point of feeling like nothing. How to get to the point where you feel like you are worthy of respect, love, consideration, and the best things of life. Yeah, good treatment, thoughtfulness. Yeah, well, listen, you have to go to God for this kind of healing. That's what I had to do. You're looking at a person who was on the large side all of her life, even from childhood. If I walked through the hallways, the kids would run away talking about, well, run, hi, here comes the teacher. And I'd be their age. Yeah. So uh, I was made fun of. I was called ugly so much that I would stand in the schoolyard, look at myself in the reflection of a school glass window and look back at all the other kids and some of them were past ugly, they were oogly. And I thought I was the ugliest kid on the block, in the schoolyard, in the whole classroom, wherever I was. I thought I was the ugliest. I'm telling you, that's how your, your belief system can really get screwed up. You get enough negative enforcement a reinforcement, oh my goodness, it can really do damage. It can blind you to the most beautiful things God has already given you because you have fallen for the lie. And when the lie is repeated enough, it becomes a truth to you. And that's sad. And it burrows itself deep into your subconscious and it becomes your belief system. That's sad. I'm, I'm telling you. You walk around with your head down. You, you don't want to look at anybody because you're afraid if you look, you're going to catch somebody. They're laughing at me. Somebody's looking at me. Oh, it's a hor it, I'm telling you, it is a horrible feeling. I have felt like that all the way through elementary school and part of junior high. I was so glad when I got out of all these schools and got to junior college and got past all that stupidity of people laughing at each other and putting each other down and pointing the finger and ostracizing. I mean, it just gets ridiculous. I don't know why people are so cruel, but it's, it's innate. I mean, when you talk about we are born in sin and shaping in iniquity, people love hurting people, and I don't get it. It's a source of entertainment to them. That is sick, you guys. Okay, anyway, going past that, do you know when I was 26 years old, I'm talking all the way up to right before I gave my heart to the Lord. I started going to church when I was 26, but I got saved when I was 27. I had to be convinced over time. When I was 26, I could sit anywhere, introspect, recollect, and all that pain that I felt in the second grade, the fourth grade, the seventh grade, the 10th grade, all of that hurt would be right there. All I'd have to do is reach out and touch. My pain would be as close to me as my breath coming out of my mouth. It never went away. Now, people who inflict that kind of pain they're quick to say, ha, ha, come on, that was 30 years ago. That was 20 years, 10 years ago. Get over it. Oh, no, I'm going to tell you something, you guys. Heads up, uh, as the kids say, newsflash, you cannot get over that. Unless you have supernatural intervention, you cannot and will not get over it. Time does not erase pain. It covers it up under a mound of other pain, but it does not erase it. You need a living God. 
That is the only power there, the only source of healing you have. No psychiatrist, no medication, none of that. You need to go to God. That is where your healing lies. All of that stuff that I could pull up and hurt from, gone. It's gone. The only reason is because I went to God and asked him to take all that ugliness out, take all the pain, all the insecurities, all the, 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 the ugly memories that brought the pain. I can remember it all, but I don't feel any pain at all. Now, my mother, when she was in her 60s, was still reciting some of the painful things her grandfather would say to her. And she would poke her finger in the table and, and he said, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at her like, wow, that's really hurting her. It was normal to me for people to hurt from things that far. But now that I have been saved for, for a larger half of my life than unsaved, I understand it is normal to me now for healing. As soon as someone says something, I mean, as recently as this week, someone did something, someone said something, there was an attitude, there was a look, a catty remark. And anytime they fly out of their mouth towards me, immediately in my spirit, I'm saying this to God. Okay, God, take the hurt out. Don't let that penetrate me. Don't let that hurt. Take the anger out. I don't want to waste my emotions on stupidity. And before I know it, I'm over it. I'm not angry. I'm not resentful. I'm not hurt. It's gone, gone, gone. Because I've learned, okay, I had to reach way back and get all that old stuff. That took time to get all that old stuff out. Well, see, I don't want anything embedding itself in me anymore. So as soon as I see it coming, um, uprooting as quickly as I see it so that it never gets deep down in there. And then it, it bounces off and it's gone. It evaporates. It's no longer a part of me. And that's how I get, I get to live my life with confidence, with security, with self-love, a good, healthy self-esteem and forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. And I'm mellow as a cello because I will not live a day with that negative crap in my heart. I won't allow it. God's peace is way too beautiful to live with within than to have all that disturbed by someone else's nonsense. I won't allow it. You have to possess your land the same way. I went in, as the Bible says, when God says, go in and possess your land, he is not just talking about the way they met in the Old Testament, going and getting property. You have to possess yourself. You have to own, you have to, you have to handle yourself so that you can handle life without crawl, falling apart and crushing and crumbling under the weight. You don't have to deal with that weight. God will carry the weight. He will carry the load. He will take it off of your back. You don't have to deal with that anymore. That's why the New Testament says, when Jesus invites you and says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for I am meek and lowly of heart. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You can't handle this crap, so give it to him. They throw it at you. You catch it here, Lord. You take it. Save yourself from dealing with other people's poison. Do you hear me? Okay. I'm getting emotional, so I'm trying to calm myself down. Okay. Now, you've got to go to God. You've got to say prayers like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, here's my list. Now, these are the people that have said and done things that hurt me and the people that didn't do things that hurt me. They didn't do things. They weren't there for me. They didn't hug me when I needed it. They, they brushed me off when I was hurting. Those things hurt me. 
And I'm asking you to remove the pain from those memories in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to pull out the root of abandonment, the root of rejection in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver me from all this poison. Heal my heart. Heal my mind in the name of Jesus, I pray. And then let the games begin, y'all, because God will do healing through your dreams. He will do healing through visions. He will do healing when you're at the altar, when you're at home and something wells up and you're wondering what's going on with me. And okay, Lord, have your way. And if you ask God, he'll answer you. I asked God what time, what, one time, why is that bothering, so, bothering me so much? And God spoke and said, rejection. And when I asked God to get all the rejection out, to the root, the root of rejection, because I was tired of it controlling every part of my life, every aspect of my character, my personality, my mindset, my reactions to, to problems and issues. And I'm telling you, I went through a two-hour, a two-hour deliverance session. And through that healing, freedom, I literally not, you know, looked in the mirror, I was the same size, but I felt as if I had lost a hundred pounds. God took a weight off when he uprooted that rejection. And that rejection started from my mother and then was deeply rooted by kids making fun of me. Oh, I went through a lot of stuff emotionally as a child, but God handled it all. And you see confidence now. This isn't fake, you guys. This is a real work of God. This is what God does when he teaches you how to love yourself. And he shows you you no longer need to apologize to anyone. If you need it to do any apologizing, you come to me. I'm the only one that has that power. No one else has the ability to put you in hell or lock you up in a jail. I don't care if it's a physical jail. I'm talking about a spiritual, mental, emotional, psychological jail. Only God has the ability to handle that kind of prison. And he will set the captives free. Let yourself be set free. Go to God. He's got all the keys, baby. He's got all the keys. He'll pull you all the way out of your dungeon and show you the a whole new world. Mm. God bless you as you go to God. Oh, here's the other key, forgiveness. The other thing you need to do is ask God to help you write down the list of the ones you remember and the ones you don't remember. Just put a little mark to represent them as you see them in your mind's eye and ask God to give you the ability to forgive them. Now, you may not feel any change, but God knows how to let you know his work is done and he will make you cross their paths. And that's what happened to me. The lump, the knot in my gut, gone. The anger, gone. The resentment, gone. Only God can work those kind of miracles. So no, you do not have to live in torment all your life because of other people's inflicted pain. You don't. Not with a God like him. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today, and he handles this baby. And I know right where to run every single time. When he says, I am the resurrection and the life, he will pull you up out of your graves. Read Ezekiel 37. He will pull you up out of your graves and breathe new life into you. That's what he did for me. Watch, do it. Take this time and share with the Lord your hurts, your dilemmas, your insecurities, your bondages, your, your frustrations, and, and watch and work. <sighs> Lay yourself at his feet. Mm. God bless you as you receive your healing and freedom. Amen.